Hello, my name's Gary Shotton, and I'm here as a part of Inspiring Better Business, IBB Talks. And today we're going to talk about contracts and one very important contract that you might have with God. Well, it was the, as shared with me, there was some late 1800s and early 1900s. Uh, America had been discovered and there was people wanting to uh, immigrate from Europe to America and they knew and heard of the great stories of land of the free and the opportunity to start over and to get uh, a new beginning in America. And there was this family, as I understand, that really wanted the whole family to go to America. But the ticket price for the steamship was fairly large, fairly excessive. So they worked and, and, uh, and saved and worked and saved and they worked and saved and they pooled their money so that they had enough for their ticket to go to America. Oh, they're so excited. And they knew that they probably would never come back to Europe, or if it was, it would probably be a miracle. And so they packed up what they had and they said goodbye. But when they went to the buy the ticket, uh, they were not very literate and uh, they were quickly uh, paid their money and got their ticket, but they didn't read the contract very closely. They just assumed some things uh, about the contract and they were important to know the departure time and where the port was and where to get on and basic things, but they didn't read the fine print. So they proceed to board the, the uh, ship and it's going to be a three week journey across the ocean. So they had knew that and they had saved ahead and they had put uh, basic crackers and, and uh, things that wouldn't spoil and things that, that they could eat as they journeyed across the ocean. Well, as they arrived almost at destination, uh, they're making comment of how exciting this would be to be in America, to be in the United States of America. And in that comment, they mentioned to someone that they're looking forward to having a really good meal. Well, this individual on the ship said, you didn't realize your contract included all of the food. All that you see, you mean, this, this family said, you mean when all of you went there to the buffet or they were fed the food, that was included with the ticket? It sure was. Well, that is some semblance of the way some of us have looked at the Word of God. And we've quickly read the contract and think of the New Testament being a New Testament contract and the Old Testament being an Old Testament contract between ourselves as humans and God. And if we don't read and understand the details of the contract, what in, we're entitled to and what God has provided in His side of the deal, then we could miss a whole part of what's intended for our lives. You know, the first signature on our salvation was salvation by grace through faith, not of works. That's Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. And then 1 Corinthians uh, uh, 2, 9 and 10 says, If thou shalt confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Well, that's the ticket on the life eternal with God Almighty. But what about the extras? Let's read the rest of the contract. Let's not be quick to just jump to the ticket and, and get to heaven. Let's look at what God has provided as a part of this salvation. Several things are critical. Several things are true. It says clearly that before Jesus was uh, crucified, that he was uh, whipped 39 times. And 1 Peter 2.24 talks about where when he, he those stripes that were he was whipped upon, and basically his back was turned to a, a, a bloody mess, that was to pay for our healing, that we're to walk in health. It's included. Now, I'm not here to talk about that. It's just an example. And I'm, walked, I'm walking in health for many years because I understood the contract. Now, there's another thing why we're talking here. What about God's provision? God's provision for finances, money, and the things that money could buy. 
Well, as I read that, I understand that God is, has included, already included on his side of the arrangement, on his side of his agreement, and he will definitely honor his side, our sufficiency in finances. I don't use the word prosperity much because, you know, words take a change over time. Uh, when I was in a high school kid, we would never call a girl hot, well, because that would have meant something pretty bad. But now, if we talk about, or years later, we talk about a girl that's hot, that means she's a pretty cool girl. Well, words change over time. And I've seen in the last 20 years, this word prosperity has a lot of meanings. So I'd rather call the word provision. God has promised to give us provision on anything and everything we need in this life, but there's certain things on our side in order to accomplish that. First of all, we talk about it all the time, faith without works is dead. Faith without corresponding action does not produce life. That's in James. Well, if, if we have to create some kind of corresponding action, then we need to know what those actions are. And by the way, they're so simple. They're not something that's really difficult, like swim uh, 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 two miles in water or, or run a 100, 100 miles race or, or bicycle for 125 miles or run a, a marathon. These are very simple on our side. But each one of the things that God asks us to do to, uh, to uh, initiate our side of the contract is do something in faith. Something that says, I understand the Word of God. I understand not the totality, not just one little verse taken out of context. But when you want to look at a subject, you want to study all about that subject from many different angles and look at how Jesus dealt when he was on this earth, especially the New Testament. We're primarily under the New Testament agreement with God and because of Jesus Christ. And so we look in the New Testament and we see how Jesus fulfilled uh, the, the, his side of the contract and what we should do to fulfill this side, our side of the contract. And uh, what we have uh, is a paradigm shift when we, when we do that. You see, uh, a lot of people are just begging God to do something. Oh God, I please uh, bail me out of this situation. And there's an element of God that is full of mercy, and he does work in mercy in our behalf on occasion, but the norm should be we should be operating in faith. We shouldn't be relying on his mercy to bail us out of a jam. And so by the way we even say with our words, um, uh, Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24 really talks about the importance of our words, that, if, that the words of our mouth are powerful. And so sometimes the only thing we have to do is quote God's word with confidence, not just wrote, just not just memorize it, but understand what we're saying. Uh, one of those verses is in Psalm 37. It says that, that the righteous shall never be forsaken, nor will we the seed be begging for bread. Well, right there, if that's a contract, then God's going to make sure I'm righteous, meaning I'm part of the family of God. I know that's Old Testament. And by the way, the Old Testament didn't just go away. It was a forerunner of the New Testament. So all these laws are going to be uh, in harmony. In the Old Testament, there's probably less information. The New Testament is more detailed about the different app characters of God. But if I'm righteous and I'm right with God, then... I will never, ever be forsaken, and I will never go into begging for bread. So take that off the list. But I've got to do the things on my side that will we'll see that come about. And that's what we're talking about, is changing the way we think. That in our case, if you had a job, then you need to go to your job and do your duty, and you're going to exchange that for money. But if you can't find a job, you're still entitled to the promises that God will never forsake you, and you will never beg for bread. I've never begged for bread. I will never beg, beg, beg for bread. Not because I, I'm, I wouldn't be hungry, because I'm not hungry. I've always had provision. God will always give you provision for your family. And so on our 
our side, what are the steps that I need to do? Uh, we talk about starting with what you have and learning the principles of growing step by step and the principles of, 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 of not just owning a business like all kinds of employees, but being able to provide for your household. That is the first level of provision. Well, this could be new thinking for you. I ask you to study the Word of God or read the Word of God in a way that you're saying, hey, what's my side of the agreement? What, 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 it's nothing wrong with this. God, I'll remind God what He's already promised me, and that's what I do in many of my prayers. Thank you, Lord, for providing for me the things that you I see in your Word that are mine, and I receive them because I'll take the action of faith that caused them to come into reality. Well, thanks for being a part of Inspiring Better Business.